Hello students, welcome to another lesson on history of English language, uh, especially focusing on the module 4 of history of English language paper prescribed for the 4th semester by University of Kerala for BA English Language and Literature. So uh, today in this class I am going to focus on this topic, word formation in English. So this is quite an elaborate uh, topic. Uh, we will be discussing the different methods by different processes that result in new words being added to the vocabulary. So in history of English language, you have already learned about the language families and how English as a language came into being. We learned about different stages of the development of English. Now, we know that language is a living, growing thing. Every year, certain new number of words get added to the dictionary very formally. So we have to learn how these new words come into being. So it is for that purpose that we are going to learn this particular uh, lesson here, word formation in, in English. So word formation is a process which results in a new lexeme. So what is a lexeme? You know about phoneme. A phoneme is the smallest unit of sound in a language. You know about morpheme. Morpheme is the smallest meaningful unit in a language. So what is lexeme? Lexeme is a standard shape of a word as you would find in a dictionary. For example, if you want to check the meaning of a word named processes, let's focus on that word, processes. You look that up on a dictionary. You won't be able to find processes. But you will be able to find process. So that is a standard shape of that word. So that is actually the lexeme which you can find in a dictionary. That's why we returned in the past tense. That's why we directly returned in the dictionary. But you can find returned. So that is the lexeme or the standard shape of the word as you find in a dictionary. So word formation is a process which results in a new lexeme which gets added to the dictionary. Now let's look at different processes by which new words get added to the dictionary. Uh, so in this particular lesson I have lined out 25 different methods by which words get added to the dictionary or words are formed. First process is affixation or derivation. This we have learned in linguistics already. So what is affixation? So affixation is a process by which a new word is derived by adding an affix to an existing word. So you have an existing word, you add another affix uh, and a new word is formed. So that process is called affixation. Um, and there are different processes. The, we can use uh, prefix, prefixes and suffixes. Prefixes are affixes which occur before the root of the word. Uh, suffixes are affixes which occur after the root of the word. You know that prefixes occur first and suffixes occur last in a word. So let's see. Uh, let's use, look at the use of prefixes. So we have some negative prefixes like im, in, un, etc. Like impossible, inevitable, unstable, immoral, non-violence, disservice, illogical, irrational, defrost, misunderstand, pseudo-secular. So all these are negative prefixes. And second category is we have prefixes of number. Like it uh, signals a number, monosyllabic. Signaling one, unilingual, again one, bipolar, dipole. These two signify two, tricycle, tetracyclic, multinational, polysyllabic. And the third category is we have prefixes of time and order. The time in which uh, or order in which the word will occur in context. Let's look at this. We have words like re-evaluate. Re is again a prefix of time or order. re suggests that it is not happening for the first time. It is happening for a second or third time. Antichamber. Antichamber, again, it signifies the order in which uh, the chamber 
comes before you reach the chamber there is an anti chamber adu pole fortel premature post war xmla super fine these are all examples of prefixes of time and order and the fourth category is prefixes of location we have words like subway sub is an example of a prefix of location interracial intra departmental trans migration sorry and then for fifth category is prefixes of degree or size to show size we have prefix like super out under etc so superman not just a simple man it signifies a larger size or strength superman outrun undercooked undercooked again it's a under is a prefix of degree hyperactive again degree not just active hyperactive ultra modern mini bus overactive arch angel midi skirt maxi dress these are all examples of prefixes of degree or size then we have the sixth category is prefixes of attitude uh, pro anti uh, co counter etc are examples so we have pro hindu anti social cooperate counter proposal etc and the seventh category is we have other general prefixes like auto so we have autobiography neo rich semi circle pan indian etc and the eighth prefixes i would like to mention is class changing prefixes which changes the class of a word uh class changing i have already mentioned this in a previous lesson so class changing prefixes means it would change the grammatical category from one category to another for example let's look at this head head is noun and if you add a b to the front behead is a verb so adding b changes the word from noun to verb b add cheyumbodhekku head nu parna noun behead nu parna verb aayittu maaru so b is a class changing prefix likewise let's look at n able is an adjective but when we add n it becomes enable which is a verb so n is a class changing prefix which changes adjective to verb so this is an example of class changing prefix so let's use it, look at suffixes now we have two kinds of suffixes mainly class maintaining suffixes and class changing suffixes class maintaining suffixes as the name um, itself says uh, it will maintain the class it won't result in a change of grammatical category for example friendship friend is a noun and if you add ship friendship is also a noun likewise boy and boyhood both nouns hindu and hinduite both nouns london and londoner nouns tiger and tigress nouns king and kingdom nouns machine and machinery nouns let's look at class changing suffixes first category is noun to adjective these suffixes when added it will change a noun to adjective for example india to indian india is a noun indian is an adjective an adjective to noun able is an adjective ability is a noun noun to verb fort is a noun 45 becomes a verb verb to noun drive is a verb driver is a noun then we have verb to adverb sleep is a verb sleepily is an adverb adjective to adverb nice is an adjective nicely is a verb is an adverb okay so this was the first category affixation or derivation now this is a process by which a word a new word is derived by adding an affix to an existing word let's look at the second category of word formation so this is inflection this is pretty simple inflection as i have already already mentioned in many classes before this this is actually the modification of a word inflection is a modification of a word why do we modify this word again we modify the word to express different grammatical categories appo oru word ne nammal vera oru grammatical category like maatan vendiyana inflection use cheyid modify cheynad ini vera grammatical categories edakkeyana we can change grammar tense 
grammatical mood, grammatical voice, person, number, gender and case. Let's, uh, we only have eight inflections in English language. We have already mentioned this in a class. Let's look at that. If you add S, it will become plural. S to a noun. Car, cars. Apostrophe S suggests possession. John, John's. Again, to a verb, if you add S, it becomes reads. Read, reads. It means that the noun is first person singular. If you add ing to a verb, that means it is continuous. Ed to a verb means past tense. T to a verb means T or ed to a verb means perfect. Then er to an adjective means it is comparative degree. Est to an adjective means it is superlative degree. So these are the examples of inflections. Now inflections are Inflection means modification of a word to express different grammatical categories. So that was the second um, process of word formation. Let's look at the third process. The third process is conversion. Now what is conversion? Some words we can use it. It belongs to a certain class. grammatical category word in one change in the word, one grammatical category item we use. That is conversion. So, a certain word which belongs to one grammatical category is used as a different grammatical category without making any change in the form of the word. Without adding affix or prefix. Without making any change in the form of the word, some words are used up used in different classes. This is a process of derivation. It is called conversion. Let's look at this. We have a word called like light. Let's look at this. Switch on the light. That is the first sentence. Here light is a noun. Light the lamp. Here light is a verb. So without making any changes, without adding an affix or prefix, we have used one word as a different grammatical category. This is an example of conversion. Conversion of one word from one grammatical category to another. Let's look at this. Here we are looking at the word round. Okay. Let's look at this. The earth is round. Here round is an adjective or an adjective complement. Let's say that. The doctor went on a round. Here it is used as a noun. You must round all the sharp corners. Here it is used as a verb. So here you can say how, you can see how the word round is used as an adjective, a noun and a verb without making any changes in it or without adding a prefix or a suffix. Okay, let's move on to the next category, compounding. Compounding is the formation of a new word by joining two or more bases. A new word is formed by joining two or more bases. Sometimes the new word, sometimes these two bases are separated by a hyphen. In some other cases, the hyphen appears to have disappeared. Let's look at the, some examples. Noun plus noun examples. Noka. Motorcycle. Both are nouns. Motorcycle. Tear gas. Girlfriend. Fire engine. Goldfish. Pot belly. Hair breadth. These are all noun plus noun examples. Let's look at noun plus adjective examples. Okay. Trustworthy. Trust is a noun. Worthy is an adjective. Trustworthy. Homesick. Home is a noun, sick is an adjective. Duty free, beauty conscious, brick red, sea green. These are all examples of noun plus adjective compounds. And the third category is adjective plus noun compounds. Pale face. Pale is an adjective. Face is a noun. Pale face. Yellow press, red light, fat head, blackboard. These are all examples of adjective plus noun compounds. Let's look at this. Verbs or adverbials or verbal nouns. 
For example, sightseeing. This is used as a verb, right? Sightseeing, birth control, uh, record player, brainwashing, walking stick, man eating, heartbreaking, easy going, babysitting, lip read. These are all examples of verb, verbs or adverbials or verbal nouns. Okay, so compounding is combination of two or more words. Again, we have words like mother-in-law, etc. Moon words combined chay the Okay. Alright, let's move on to the fifth category. So this is actually uh, almost similar to compounding, clipping. Clipping is almost similar to compounding, but there is a difference. Uh, so, some words are used in shortened form. Okay. Sorry, I, my bad. This is not the same. Alright. Clipping is when, uh, you know, some words are, we actually shorten some words for our convenience. Uh, we subtract one or more syllables from a word. Okay. One word in a number of short tack. We have to syllables in a cut syllables. So shortening sometimes occur in, at the beginning of the word. Chala words in the adhite bhagam bhubu. Sometimes at the end of the word. Chala words in the avasana bhagam bhubu. Or at both ends of the word. Chala words in the adhyom avasanom bhubu. Let's look at different kinds of clipping. First is back clipping or apocopation. Back clipping or apocopation. Here back means last part of the word. Here last part of the word is dropped. Let's look at this. Ad. Advertisement becomes ad. And then the last word advertisement. This is gone. Advertisement is gone. Doctor becomes doc. Ter disappears. Gasoline becomes gas. Gymnasium becomes gym. Examination becomes exam. Public house becomes pub. Cablegram became cable. Popular concert became pop. Facsimile became fax. And another kind of clipping is for clipping or aphoresis. Here it retains the final part. That means that first part of the word is gone. Word in the adhite bhagam katti For example, telephone becomes phone. Tele ang Word in the adhite bhagam Parachute becomes shoot. Alligator becomes gator. University becomes varsity. Let's look at middle clipping or syncopation. This we will deal with further detail. Uh, so here middle part of the word is retained. Um, first and last cut. First part of the word is gone. Last part of the word is also gone. Only the middle part of the word is retained. For example, influenza becomes flu. Detective becomes tech. Head shrinker becomes shrink. Pyjamas becomes jams. Okay. Now, let's look at complex clipping. Complex clipping is, you know, when we take compound words. Compound words are combination of two words. One part of the original compound remains intact. Uh, you will understand it now. Cable telegram. This was a compound word. Cable telegram. Here, cable gram remains. Tele disappears. So that is complex clipping. Or a compound word in Agatha Narakana clipping and a complex clipping. Optical art. It becomes O part. Navigation certificate becomes Navi cert. Okay. Now let's look at the next process syncopation. Syncopation we already discussed here. Middle clipping. That was syncopation. But we have to treat it as a different process, an altogether different process because it is important. So, this is a particular form of shortening or abbreviation. An example is the word pram. Pram, you might know. Kuttikalaike kedatti undikkoondu vonna vandi kyaana namal pram in the varayana. Originally, that word was perambulator. Then it was syncopated to prambulator. It was syncopated to prambulator. And then, what is syncopation? Even yaana namal syncopation enda anana nokane. In syncopation, a vowel is removed from a word and the consonants on either side then run together. So, what happens in syncopation is, one word in a vowel, 
അത് അങ്ങ് പോകും ഈ ഈ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞ വാവൽ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് റിമൂവ് ഫ്രം ദിസ് വേൾഡ് ആൻഡ് ദെൻ കോൺസനൻസ് പി എൻ ആർ ഡിസൈഡ് ടു റൺ ടുഗെദർ സോ പെരാമ്പുലേറ്റ ബിക്കംസ് പ്രാമ്പുലേറ്റ ഓക്കെ സോ ആസ് എ റിസൾട്ട് യു ലൂസ് വൺ സിലബിൾ ഏർലിയർ ഇറ്റ് വാസ് പെ റാം ബു ലൈറ്റ് ഫൈവ് സിലബിൾസ് ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു ഇപ്പോൾ പ്രാം ബു ലൈറ്റ് ഓൺലി ഫോർ സിലബിൾ സിലബിൾസ് സോ അനദർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ഇസ് വൺസ് വൺസ് വാസ് ഒറിജിനലി അത് പറയുന്നത് ഒണിസ് എന്നായിരുന്നു ഒണിസ് ആൻഡ് ദെൻ ഇ വാസ് ഡ്രോപ്ഡ് ഇ വാസ് ഡ്രോപ്ഡ് ഇറ്റ് ബിക്കം വൺസ് അതുപോലെ എൽസ് വാസ് ഒറിജിനലി എൽ എസ് എൽ എസ് എന്നായിരുന്നു ആൻഡ് ദെൻ ഇ വാസ് ഡ്രോപ്ഡ് ഓക്കെ ഇറ്റ് ബിക്കംസ് എൽസ് സോ പ്രാമ്പുലേറ്റർ സംഭവിച്ച എന്താണെന്ന് നമുക്ക് നോക്കാം പെരാമ്പുലേറ്റ് ദ ഒറിജിനൽ വേർഡ് വാസ് പെരാമ്പുലേറ്റ് ഇ വാസ് ലോസ്റ്റ് ബൈ സിങ്കോപേഷൻ ഇറ്റ് ബിക്കേം പ്രാമ്പുലേറ്റ് ദെൻ ഇറ്റ് അണ്ടർ വെൻറ്റ് ക്ലിപ്പിംഗ് അതിൻ്റെ ലാസ്റ്റ് പാർട്ട് ക്ലിപ്പ് ചെയ്ത് പോയി നൗ ഇറ്റ് ബിക്കേം പ്രാം സോ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് എ വെരി കോംപ്ലെക്സ് കോംപ്ലെക്സ് പ്രോസസ് അഗെൻ ദീസ് ആർ ഓൾ എക്സാമ്പിൾസ് ഓഫ് സിങ്കോപേഷൻ അഗെൻ ബോൺ വോൺ ഷോൺ ഫോർ ലോൺ these are all syncopated forms earlier it used to be born born shorn for lauren etc see i have already uh, they all had this ending en but then this e was dropped by syncopation okay let's look at the seventh procedure this is called acronyms acronyms we all know what it is acronyms are also called initialisms so acronyms are usually formed by joining the initial letters of words uh, so here i would like to point out the difference between acronym and abbreviation difference between an acronym and an abbreviation okay in abbreviation what happens is um let's look at examples then you will understand it better this is an example of acronym aids acquired immunodeficiency syndrome idile nammle oro word inde first letter eduthu a i d s but do i do we call it a i d s we call it aids so it is pronounced as a new word that is called acronyms acronyms are pronounced as an entire word itself oru word ait complete aitu nammle pronounce cheyum acronyms ne again laser light amplification by simulated emission of radiation and unicef nato gestapo these are all examples of acronyms so acronyms are uh, pronounced as full words then abbreviation we will pronounce it letter by letter we will pronounce it letter by letter it's not bips it's bbc british broadcasting corporation dna b2c uno not you know it's uno so that is the difference between acronyms and abbreviations abbreviation in abbreviation the initial letters of the phrase is read letter by letter acronyms are read as a word let's uh, focus on the next category now blending or portmanteau words blending or portmanteau words now blending is what it is almost like compounding compounding la sambhavich enda nu vachal rendu words um full words um nammal join cheyidu both the words that join together were retained completely like motor cycle motor um cycle these both words are retained in entirety but in blends what happens is blending or portmanteau words what happens is that uh, they are formed by combining parts of two words two or more words blend is a word formed by parts of two other words blend nu parayna oru word vera rando adil koodalo words ne combine cheyna enna aa word full edukilla adine part mathrame nammal edukkolu okay let's look at this these are the different methods by which blends are formed let's look at examples then you will understand it better for example let's look at brunch brunch is taken from two words breakfast and lunch but we don't call it breakfast lunch we take br from the first word and u 
N C H from the second word. So we only take parts of two words. Branch. So beginning of one word and end of another word. And second uh, method of blending is beginning of two words are combined. For example, cybernetic organism. We call it cyborg. C Y B and O R G. Okay. And then third method is one complete word is combined with part of another word. Uh, for example, guess and estimate. We combine it to form guesstimate. So, guess is retained completely. Estimate in a part of the word. Estimate in a part of the word. Estimate in a part of the word. Although, that is not. Okay. Then, um, then, two words are blended around a common sequence of sounds. These two words are common sequence of sounds. That is the two words that we mix. For example, California and fornication. This is common sequence of sounds. California and fornication. This is common sequence of sounds. N I on that. Right. So, this is the word called Californication. This is the word called Derived. Again, another method is multiple sounds from two compound words, component words are blended while preserving the sound order. For example, let's look at these words. Lithe and slimy becomes slithy. இதில் நம்மில் செய்யின் அந்தான் வைச்சல் sounds ஆனு combine செய்யின் words அல்ல sounds ஆனு combine செய்யின் we combine sounds here so that is blending or portmanteau words so we have covered 8 different topics I mean 8 different processes of word formation in English first was affixation or derivation what was that a new word is derived by adding a and affix to an existing word. Inflection is a word is modified to express a different grammatical category. Conversion is a word is used as a different grammatical category without making any changes. Compounding is joining of two or more words. Clipping is shortening of a word. Uh, syncopation is a vowel is dropped and consonants are running together. Acronyms is uh, we take a phrase and we take the first uh, letters and form a new word. Blending is a part of a word combines with a part of another word to form a new word. Now let's move on to the ninth process of word formation. This is a process called telescoping. Telescoping is also a kind of blending. Okay, blending parts of two words. Okay, here the new word is formed by omitting a portion of a word which is duplicated in the second word. I'll give you a very uh, easy example. Let's look at these two words. Slang and language. The common itola words are L-A-N-G. Common itola letters, sounds are lang. So we just... Um, Omit that part in one word. And we form a new word called slang which. It's not slang language. It's slang which. Because L-A-N-G was common. It is duplicated in the second word. So we omit L-A-N-G and we form a new word. So telescoping on it is bringing together of new words. Just like a telescope does. So what a telescope does is it brings uh, distant views, uh, distant visions closer. Likewise, it brings distant words closer by omitting the common or duplicated series of sounds. Again, to don. To don means to put on some dress or something. So, it, earlier it was to do on. But what happens in do on? It has this common letter O. So, it was brought together and became a new word to don. Again, to doff means to take off something. So it was to do off. And it was a common title. Reduplicate. Duplicate either way. No. Letter I don't know. Oh. So that was dropped. And this was brought together as a word. To doff. So that is an example of telescoping. It is a kind of blending. New word is formed by 
omission of a portion of one word duplicated in another. Okay, let's move on to the 10th um, process of word formation. This is borrowing. So, English language, we have already learned about different kinds of borrowing uh, from languages like French, Latin, Scandinavian, etc. So, English language has a large number of words which has been borrowed from another language, other languages because we have uh, had contact with these languages over periods of time. So, the English language has been enriched by these borrowings. Let's look at some examples of borrowings. The English has borrowed Guru from Hindi, Bazaar from Persian, Sheikh from Arabic, Tycoon from Japanese, Dame from French, Biology, Boxer, Ozone from German, Jacket, Yogurt, Kiosh from Turkish, Pistol, Robot from Czech, Croissant from French, Piano from Italian, Pretzel from German, Sofa from Arabic, Tattoo from Tahitian. So these are all borrowed words. Let's look at a subheading of borrowings. This is called a calc or loan translation. A calc or loan translation. So this is also a kind of borrowing. In this what happens is uh, a word is borrowed from another language and then uh, a slight translation is given to that word and then it becomes a lexical item in, in this language itself. That is a word that we have to translate in another language. That is why we English to translate it in English. That is why we have to translate a word that is a lexical item in the dictionary. For example, German. German is a word that is Sakul or Shakul. We borrowed it into English and then we translated it into school. That is why skyscraper is, it is taken from the Dutch word Vulcan Crabber. Boyfriend is taken from J Japanese word boyfriend. -o. Okay, then it was translated into boyfriend. So that's an example of calc or loan translation. Let's look at the 11th process of word formation. Coinages or inventions. Coinage is the invention of totally new words. Um, this is, uh, you know, usually happens when um, a product, a new kind of product name is um, coined and then it becomes established. For example, we have words like Kleenex. Kleenex means tissue paper. Kleenex was actually a brand of tissue paper. But a lot of people, including my husband, call tissue paper Kleenex. And America is a brand of Kleenex. So, they don't tissue paper. Kleenex. Likewise, we don't say petroleum jelly. We, say, we call it Vaseline. Because the word has become so popular. So, it was the name of a brand, a product name. But it has been, um, uh, you know, it, it has been fixed as a, uh, accepted as a, new word in itself. Again, we have uh, words of products like X-ray, laser, Sputnik, astronaut. These are all words which were coined or invention of totally new words. That was the 11th procedure. Let's look at eponyms next. 12th process is eponyms. Eponyms is, um, you know, we have, we uh, form new words from proper names. New number of words are formed in English based on proper names of people or places. One all day, one stalat in day, one pair of chitta, namla, one word and daku. Other than eponyms, for example, we get sandwich from Earl of Sandwich. This guy actually liked putting food in between, you know, all kinds like meat in between two pieces of bread. Other than that, sandwich. Again, what is taken from Scott James Watt? Walt is taken from Alessandro Volta. Gamp or umbrella. Gamp is another word for umbrella. It is taken from Mrs. Gamp. She is a character from Dickens' fiction. Boycott, I have already mentioned in the last video. Boycott, the word is derived from Captain Boycott. Calico is taken from Calicut. Malapropism is a word from Mrs. Malaprop. Uh, she is a character in uh, The Rivals. That is a play. 
malapropism becomes a wrong means a wrong usage of any language that is called malapropism so mrs malaprop is a character who is really obsessed with english language uh, much like in malayalam we have this mammootti de oru padathil undu english inde bayangara oru craze aanalo mammootti kanathu appo he uses english in a wrong way in that particular movie mm. so exactly like that mrs malaprop actually calls a person Uh, you are the very pineapple of perfection what she means is pinnacle of perfection but she uses wrong words so that kind of usage is called malapropism and the fine example of malapropism from malayalam movies is uh, bindu panikkar in sri krishna purutha nakshatra tilakam she says that cheta ana kandu to prostitutive lookilation what she means to say is executive but then she doesn't know english that much so she says prostitutive okay any way okay and then genes is from the city of genova so that is eponyms eponyms is the formation of a new word from a proper name a uh, name of a person or a place okay let's move on to the 13th process called reduplication so this is a process of forming new words by doubling an entire word okay either you double an entire word or you double part of a word uh, total reduplication in english is very rare let's see that criss cross here you see that part of this word is duplicated criss cross poo 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 is an example of total reduplication ide word thaneyana pinne parneykana hush hush is also total reduplication doodle do is partial reduplication kit kat partial reduplication see saw wishy washy tip top hurry worry trin trin hanky panky sing song walkie talkie hum drum goody goody these are all examples of reduplication ivada sambhavikkunnad endha nu vachal pudhi oru word thanne criss cross ennu parna oru word nerthe illadirunna oru word aanu idu form cheyda engena nu vachal cross ennu parna already oru word ne nammal reduplicate cheyidu allenge at least a part of that word is duplicate then adinu or subheading und rhyming compounds rhyming compounds usually in english language uh, we use it for child talk kuttigalod samsarikkanakka vendi use cheyna it's also called hypochoristic language here we uh, derive a new word uh, from two rhyming words for example bunny bunny henny penny snuggly wuggly piggy wiggy etc in indian uh, india i guess punjabi is uh, or even hindi is a language which uses these rhyming compounds a lot okay then uh, let's move on to the 14th procedure uh, onomatopic words or echoing onomatopic words as you know the name suggests what it is some words are formed by the sound that suggests their meaning അതിൻ്റെ ശബ്ദത്തിൽ നിന്ന് അതിൻ്റെ മീനിങ് നമുക്ക് കിട്ടും ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ക്ലാങ് ക്ലാങ് മീൻസ് യുനോ സംബഡി ഈസ് ബാങ്കിങ് ഓൺ ടു സംതിങ് വിസ്പർ തണ്ട് ക്ലിക്ക് ടിക്ക് ലിസ്പ് മേമ സൊ ദീസ് ആർ ഓൾ വേർഡ്സ് വിച്ച് ആർ ഫോംഡ് ബൈ ദ സെൻസ് ഓഫ് ദ സൗണ്ട് ഇൻ സെൽഫ് ഫിഫ്റ്റീൻത്ത് പ്രോസസ് ഇസ് ബാക്ക് ഫോമേഷൻ ബാക്ക് ഫോമേഷൻ ഇസ് ഇൻ സം വേർഡ്സ് ആർ Uh, the form is entirely changed okay so we it is due to misunderstanding itself let's look at an example then i can explain what this is really about so earlier we did not have this um, word called edit we had this word editor okay but then Uh, due to misunderstanding due to incorrect morphological analysis idine nammal morphological analysis cheyidappadhekku we thought that you know we presumed that it is edit plus or editor ennu nammal tetti dharichu so because of that misunderstanding we came up with this new verb called edit again we had a word called television but from that ഇതിനെ നമ്മൾ ഇൻകറക്റ്റ് മോർഫോളജിക്കൽ അനാലിസിസ് ചെയ്തു ആൻഡ് വെൻ വി ഡിഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഇൻകറക്റ്റ് മോർഫോളജിക്കൽ അനാലിസിസ് വി തോട്ട് ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് മെൻഡ് ടെലിവൈസ് പ്ലസ് ഐ ഒ എൻ സോ ദാറ്റ് ഗേവ് ബർത്ത് ടു എ ന്യൂ വേർക്ക് ടെലിവൈസ് 
ടി വിക്ക് വേണ്ടി ഷൂട്ട് ചെയ്യുന്നതിനാണ് ടെലിവൈസ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ദെൻ ബേബി സിറ്റർ വി ഹാഡ് ദിസ് വേർഡ് ബേബി സിറ്റർ ഫ്രം ദാറ്റ് എ ന്യൂ വേർഡ് വാസ് ബാക്ക് ഫോംഡ് ബേബി സിറ്റ് because of incorrect morphological analysis so this is called back formation sometimes words are reduced and form is changed due to incorrect morphological analysis that is back formation let's look at the 16th process meta analysis meta analysis is the process in which a, a spelling or a sound in a word is split in the wrong place ഒരു വേർഡിൻ്റെ വേർഡിനെ നമ്മൾ സ്പ്ലിറ്റ് ചെയ്യുമ്പോഴത്തേക്ക് റോങ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള സ്ഥലത്ത് വെച്ച് സ്പ്ലിറ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്നു അപ്പം അങ്ങനെ നമ്മൾ പുതിയൊരു വേർഡിന് ജന്മം കൊടുക്കുന്നു ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ലെറ്റ്സ് ലുക്ക് എറ്റ് ഹൗ ഏപ്രൺ കെയിം ടു ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് ലാംഗ്വേജ് ഇറ്റ് കെയിം ഫ്രം മിഡിൽ ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് ഫ്രഞ്ച് നാപ്പറോൺ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞ വേർഡിൽ നിന്നാണ് വരുന്നത് മിഡിൽ ഇംഗ്ലീഷിലേക്ക് എടുത്തപ്പോഴത്തേക്ക് നെയ്പ്രൺ എന്നാക്കി ഇതിനെ നെയ്പ്രൺ അഗൈൻ വെൻ വി Uh, used um, you know when we split it uh, it was split in the wrong place we split it here ivide ang split cheyidu n kaynittu split cheyidu so we split it in the wrong place and we made it an apron so this gave rise to a new word apron so it is it was originally napperon it was borrowed into english and termed a napron and because of our misunderstanding we split it in the wrong place we split it into an apron and thus we it gave rise to a new word apron okay again another example is in middle english we had a word called ekenami ekenami adu nammal split cheyidapulthekku ingane an ekenami ennayirunnu ezhudirunne but what happened was it was split as split as a nickname so ingena split idu earlier it was an ekke name okay and then it was ivide or gap undarunnathu adu close idu they they put a gap here after a so it came became a nickname and nickname it gave rise to this new word so that is meta analysis spelling la varuna oru mistake aanu spelling or a sound in a word is split in the wrong place and uh, um, you know that gives rise to a new word and the 17th process is elision elision is again uh, a new word is derived by leaving out letters in a word oru word inde letters nammal cut cheedu kalayunu to form a shorter word for example going to becomes gonna want to becomes wanna never these these all are occur in poetry and all never is written as v is split here cannot becomes can't over becomes o apostrophe er it is becomes tis these are all examples of elision uh, a few letters in a word are left out let's look at hypocrisms hypocrisms are pretty interesting this is also a kind of uh, clipping that is one word a long word is clipped into a shorter word into a most often a single syllable word and then a y or ie is added to the end for example let's look at this moving picture it was split to mov and then an ie was an added to the end movie likewise television was split into telly it is in Brit- britain that they call tv telly tv is actually american telly is the right british word for it okay ivada tell t e l mathram eduthu adinte attathu nammal oru y um kuda koduthu telly aaki adu pole barbecue becomes barbi australian becomes aussie handkerchief becomes hanky so this is an example of hypocrisy hypocrisy is uh, the process in which a word is split it is reduced to mostly a single syllable and then a y or ie is added to the end that is hypocrisy and then another 19th procedure is reanalysis reanalysis is sometimes you know speakers unconsciously change the morphological boundaries of a word 
uh, unconsciously they change the morphological boundaries of a word so this gives rise to uh, a new word for example let's look at this word hamburger you know how hamburger came into being hamburger was a kind of steak uh, it was a chopped uh, steak which was made hamburg style it was made in the place called hamburg adu kondayirunnu adine hamburg ennu vilikkunne pakshe nammal cheyida endha nu vachal we misunderstood we unconsciously when we um, did morphological analysis we split it into hamburg plus er sherikkum parna hamburg plus er aanu because it belongs to hamburg okay it belongs to the city of hamburg so it should have been split like this but because we didn't know about that uh, we unconsciously changed the morphological boundaries of the word and then we start splitting it into ham plus burger so hamburger is a kind of burger you might think that it is made of ham but my husband says that it is actually made of beef അപ്പൊ ഹാം കൊണ്ടുള്ള ബർഗർ അല്ല ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ആക്ച്വലി എ ബീഫ് ബർഗർ വിച്ച് വാസ് ഫൗണ്ടഡ് ഇൻ ഹാംബർഗ് ഇൻ ഇൻ ദിസ് പ്ലേസ് സോ ഇറ്റ് ഷുഡ് ഹാവ് ബിൻ സ്പ്ലിറ്റ് ലൈക്ക് ഹാംബർഗ് പ്ലസ് ഇ ആർ ബട്ട് ബിക്കോസ് ഓഫ് ആ മിസ് അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡിങ് വി സ്പ്ലിറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ഇൻ ഹാം പ്ലസ് ബർഗർ സോ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് എൻ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ഓഫ് റീ അനാലിസിസ് സോ ദിസ് ഇസ് ഹൗ എ ന്യൂ വേർഡ് ഹാംബർഗർ വിത്ത് എ ന്യൂ സെൻസ് എമേർജ്ഡ് ഓക്കെ and the 20th procedure analogy is related to reanalysis let's look at the same word hamburger but sherikkum vannal endha sambhavichu nu vachal it should have been hamburg plus er but because of a misunderstanding we split it into ham plus burger then we uh, we change we uh, you know uh, to a similar word we use the same uh, kind of sense for example ഹാം പ്ലസ് ബർഗർ ഹാം കൊണ്ടുണ്ടാക്കിയ ബർഗർ ആയിരിക്കണമല്ലോ ഹാം ബർഗർ അപ്പൊ ചീസ് കൊണ്ടുണ്ടാക്കിയ ബർഗർ എന്താ ചീസ് ബർഗർ അതിനാണ് അനാലജി എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് സിമിലർ ആയിട്ടുള്ള കോമ്പൗണ്ട്സ് തമ്മിൽ അവർ ഒരേപോലെ അങ്ങ് മാറ്റം വരുത്തുന്നു സോ ചീസ് ബർഗർ വാസ് എ ന്യൂ വേർഡ് ഫോംഡ് ഇറ്റ് വാസ് ഫോംഡ് ഓൺ ദി അനാലജി ഓഫ് ഹാം ബർഗർ okay so they thought a burger made of ham must be hamburger so a burger made of cheese must be cheeseburger so you use the same kind of logic which is used here and form a new word cheeseburger so that is a 20th form and let's look at novel creation novel creation is more or less like invention itself um so a speaker or a writer forms a new word without starting from other morphemes uh here a whole new word is discovered or invented uh by a speaker or writer to choose according to his convenience uh for example blimp blimp nu orna oru word nerthe ingane oru word illa irunnu adu sherikkum parna nerthe nammal inventions il parnathu those words were invented for a purpose but these words were invented without uh, any purpose or without any relation to anything again google is another word google the original spelling is that it is a mathematical term one followed by hundred zeros again bling is a word slang is a word these are all novel creations these were uh, made up without starting from any morphemes again 22nd procedure is creative respelling ee respelling karanam pudhiya words varunnundu for example nowadays you guys use words like boys with an z right z vechittu ningal ezhudarund so that actually becomes a new word again some other words you have coined because of creative new spell and this boy sir these are all examples of creative respelling it is becoming established after all we don't know when these things will be added to the dictionary next okay let's look at the 23rd procedure corruption or misunderstanding now corruption um, you know purely because of misunderstanding we it gives rise to new words an example is witson okay witson means actually the original meaning of the word witson is the seventh day after easter easter kaniyittulla adutha sunday aanu sherikkum parnale witson 
ഓക്കെ അപ്പോൾ ഓക്കെ ഈസ്റ്റർ ഓൾവേസ് ഹാപ്പൻസ് ഓൺ എ സൺഡേ റൈറ്റ് സോ ദ നെക്സ്റ്റ് സൺഡേ ഇസ് വിത്ത് സൺ സോ ഇറ്റ് കേം ഇൻ എക്സിസ്റ്റൻസ് ത്രൂ എ കറപ്ഷൻ സോ ഒറിജിനലി ഇറ്റ് റെഫേഴ്സ് ടു എ ഫെസ്റ്റിവൽ ദിസ് ദേ യൂസ് ടു സെലിബ്രേറ്റ് ദ ഫെസ്റ്റിവൽ ഓഫ് ദ ഡിസെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് ഹോളി സ്പിരിറ്റ് സോ ദ വേർഡ് വിത്ത് സൺ ഒറിജിനലി ഈ വേർഡ് ദിസ് വേർഡ് വിസ് വിത്ത് സൺഡേ that meant white sunday so white sunday was a sunday following easter sunday so on that day all converts to christianity wore white robes but easter kanjittulla nyaraycha vella ulupu okke ittittarunu pallil venna because it was a symbol of purification so from white sunday it became with sunday then it was shortened to with sun then because of met analysis with sunday was transformed into with sun day with sunday annayirunnu okay it was with sunday it was with sunday then it was transformed into with sunday because uh, the spelling uh, the space was put in a wrong place so it becomes with sun day annay and then later because of analogy it became with sun week with sun week nu annal easter kaiyittulla adutha aalcha with sun tide with sun sunday with sun monday angane angane pala words analogy vali undai so this is an example of corruption or misunderstanding appo ee with sun nu orna whole word inde origin ennu parnal white sunday adhaayathu easter kaangittulla adutha sunday ellarum vellu udupittondu varum so it was originally white sunday but because of mis um, um, they used to say white sunday then it was shortened to with sun day okay with sunday then other met analysis vali with sun day aaki maati pinne with sun mattulla words nu apply cheyan thodangi like with sun week with sun tide with sun sunday ingane ulla karyangal ok vali so this is corruption or misunderstanding again the word goodbye it is a form of god be with you this is a garbled form of god be with you okay then let's look at freak formation freak formation is you know quite unexpectedly or accidentally or strangely some words come into existence that is freak formation let's look at this example teetotaler teetotaler the meaning of the word is one who abstains from alcohol yadoru dushilangalum illatha or aale aanu nammal teetotaler ennu velikkunna so originally uh, how this word came into being was very funny because there was an advocate who was anti who was an anti alcohol advocate he was strictly against anti alcohol but he stammered a lot he stammered a lot so he was trying to say this expression total abstainer but then he stammered yaal vikkana kaaranam adu tea totaler ennu parna oru pudhiya word form cheyidu so that is an example of freak formation freak formation ennu parnala quite unexpectedly strangely or accidentally a new word comes into be so this was 24 uh, different processes of word formation uh, sorry for my mistake in the beginning i uh, said that there were 25 the there's only 24 so let's uh, look at these procedures once again so we uh, we'll start from the ninth one telescoping us bringing together of new words by omitting one word omitting a portion of a word reduplicated in the another borrowings borrowed from another language adinu or subheading und cal cor loan translation a word is borrowed from another language then it is translated coinages purely new words for the purpose of a product or brand name eponyms words taken from proper names names of people or places reduplication a word is Uh, a word or part of a word is um, doubled onomatopoeic words sound is the sense back formation um, we form a verb from the noun okay meta analysis you know what that is uh, the a word is split in the wrong place elision is uh, a number of letters are left out hypocrisy is a word is split into a single syllable then y or ie is added reanalysis morphological boundaries of a word is uh, changed then analogy oru word il oru karyam sambhavichu adu adhe logic use cheythu nammal veru word ilum adhe change thana varuthunu novel creation again 
ക്രിയേഷൻ ഓഫ് ടോട്ടലി ന്യൂ വേർഡ്സ് ക്രിയേറ്റീവ് റീസ്പെല്ലിംഗ് യൂസ് ഓഫ് ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് സ്പെല്ലിംഗ്സ് കറപ്ഷൻ ഓർ മിസ് അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡിങ് ദി നെയിംസ് എ സെറ്റ് ഫ്രീക്ക് ഫോമേഷൻ സം വേർഡ്സ് ഒക്കെ quite unexpectedly strangely or accidentally so that brings us to the end of this lesson on word formation i hope this class was helpful to you all the best for the exams bye